Welcome back to the MyPro Golfer channel. Today we're going to take you through one of the most complicated and difficult shots out there, the low or high spinner that gets checked on the green and stops. And sometimes with the right ball and the right conditions, you'll actually get that ball to suck back. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. Here at My Pro Golfer, you know we like to keep things simple. And today, I've got a special gift for you to help you never miss a five foot putt again. Click the link below and download today. All right, so hopefully you heard me say right conditions to spin the ball back. So a lot of people come to me as students and they're like, hey, how do I get the spin on the golf ball? Well, it's really important that you have a bag of balls that are the ball that you use for spin. And so a high spin golf ball is gonna be like a Pro V1, Pro V1 X for some of you. The Pro V1 X left dash probably doesn't have enough spin for the average player to, to be a good around the green, checky, spinny type ball. But because the majority of the time I use a Titleist golf ball, I'm just gonna explain it from the Titleist side of things. And they've been gracious enough to help me with the right ball for me, so we're gonna we're gonna showcase them today. But we've got their their range pinnacle balls for these shots because that's just what we hit out here on the golf course. Know that the ball and the face of the club. So I got some dirt on this club. I need to clean it out. The grooves are essential. You got to make sure that you've got the grooves nice and cleaned out because the whole point of spin is the ball's ability to grab on the face. And I don't know if you can see the club face here but you'll notice how the middle here is very brown. So that's just rusted out metal that creates an extra grippiness to be able to help grab the ball and spin it. So sometimes when I hit a ball uh, that's got a, a not as solid a cover as a Tylus ball, you'll see it chip of the ball or skid the ball a little bit. And you'll have a little bit of crust um, of the paint of the ball be ripped off. That's a good indicator that you've got the right club to create spin on that correct golf ball. So lastly, now that you know the club and the ball, the conditions are the next most important thing on putting spin. So soft greens, wettish greens are gonna create more spin because the harder the green as the ball lands, if you're playing very hard golf courses and a lot of the greens here in Florida that we play are very firm, uh, when they come in, they're gonna come in and bounce taking a lot of that spin that was created by the compression of the club into the golf ball out. So you watch like a US Open or a British Open, those really difficult surfaces, the reason why those courses are picked is because they can't control the ball as easily making the scores go up. And so if you're in a lot of rough, you don't think you're gonna spin the ball because you're just not gonna compress it with enough of the debris out of the grooves to create the spin that you need. So understanding course conditions and ability to know what the knowledge is. So downwind's gonna spin less, into the wind's gonna spin more as it lands on the green. So keep an eye on when you're practicing and warming up, what kind of greens do they have? Is it gonna be soft today? Well then, if you worked on this and you're starting to put spin on the ball, you may wanna throw your 100 yard club 105 into the wind and soft greens to spin it back. That's a pivotal piece before we actually get into the how to hit the golf ball. All right, so so much of golf is informational and understanding the situation. And so now we've got the situation, we've got the sensation, we, we know the understanding of the process. Now we're in an opportunity to hit a shot with some spin. The longer that you hit this means the more speed you're generating means the more spin you're putting on the ball. If you are lifting the ball up, we're not gonna create the same spin. If you're cutting across the ball on a downward angle, then you can create some spin. So you'll see these guys take these huge divots and the gals take these huge divots out of the ground with a lot of speed, putting a lot of spin on the ball, landing on the green and spinning back. You don't see those excessive spins on tour unless it's sort of wet and grainy out and the, the greens are soft and receptive to that spin. So it hits soft, bounces once and rips back. Here's the look of how that's gonna happen. You play a little bit back in your stance, 
Make sure that your chest and shoulders are on top of the golf ball and you're gonna hit more down, exiting left to create that side spin to get the ball spinning this way, landing up and spinning back. Let's test it real quick. Got my club, 60 degree, most loft I've got. My pinnacle range ball, which will not spin a lot, but if I compress it and get the club deep into the earth, it's gonna create a more downward shot on the golf ball, spinning it a lot harder than normal. That will have a tremendous amount of spin on the shot. That just landed about 100 yards and came right back to me. And you can see that divot, man, that's pretty steep and deep. That's sort of the need if you're gonna to try to put that excessive spin that'll suck back on to the golf ball. All right, so it's always good to see two different angles of a shot. And so I'm not gonna be right on my target line, I'm gonna be just a little bit at this angle, but I want you to see the shaft come on top of the golf ball, compressing it down and cutting across it to create a little bit more downward thrust to get the ball to spin up and a little bit across to create that side spin so the ball will spin back even more. It's less effective, this movement, which is gonna send the ball over rolling versus under rolling. The more you cut across it, the more spin you're gonna generate. So my target is still down those flag lines. I'm using that indicator that I, I love to use with students, trying to hit the ball in there, not too steep. I don't wanna to get too deep. This one's a little too deep, trying to over exaggerate the movement to create more spin than I even need. But I do want you to notice how much sand and dirt we compress against this club face to hit the spinner. And you can just hear by that sound that that ball is gonna spin. Oof, even that pinnacle ball spun quite a bit on the shot. And you can tell I'm definitely compressing because I've moved the turf all the way on that target line, all the way through the shot, finishing left and fully on my lead leg, creating a lot of spin. So the shorter shots, you want that same sort of speed, that's your friend, getting some speed and short swings and abbreviating the shot will still put the spin on it, just not as excessive as a spin that's full. Don't try to hit a big excessive spinny shot from 20, 30, 40 yards. You don't have enough space or speed or time to get the ball up the face enough to spin as hard as you want. You may be able to hit a checker that stops, but it won't ever suck back. So know that if you're trying to hit a, a suck back shot from 40 yards, you don't have enough speed in the swing to compress the ball hard enough to create that internal spin. You need 50, 60, 70 yards at least to put the suck back spin on the ball. Hey, just want to remind you to not forget on getting your free gift below on how to never miss a five foot putt. All right, gang, I hope this was helpful and, and you really got a lot of information about it. Remember, go ahead and practice on the range with your pinnacle ball. But when you're able to get yourself to hit your own golf balls and maybe go out and hit a few different shots on the course, test your golf ball, test the divots, make sure you're getting enough divot and enough compression to get that ball to compress against the face and spin and, and learn from each shot. Every shot you hit is a learning experience. It may not be the best shot you've ever hit, but you should learn something from everything you do. The ball tells us everything we need to know about the swing and then the divot confirms it. Remember those two things next time you're practicing and I, I wanna be here for you with whatever questions and comments you have below. So if you like today, like it. If you like it, subscribe. We'll see you next Thursday at 6 a.m.